Mm, good afternoon. Uh, I would like first of all to welcome you to another lecture. And uh, this lecture is a continuation of the previous lecture that we had where we were looking at the, the probability distribution functions of random variables. And when we discussed this topic, we were able to see some of the distribution functions and the, of interest, the one that we considered was that mostly was on the moment generating functions. So we are able to define what the moment generating functions and we are also able to look at the properties of the moment generating functions. And then we also discuss the uniqueness theorems of the moment generating functions. Now at this point, I want us to look at something that is going to be of value to us, that is application of the moment generating functions. Uh, remember, we discussed two important cases. One, the first case was on the discrete continuous distribution functions, and the second one was on continuous distribution functions. So today's lecture mostly will concentrate on the discrete continuous random variables. So I'll look at this example, and then we'll try to see how best we can apply and understand the moment generating functions. So the question which we have here, we are looking at the random variable. I will let, the, let the random variable x assume the values r with the probability law. The probability law in this case is given by our x is equal to q minus r multiplied by p. And then this r, which is the value of x, is assuming values running from 1 up to infinity. Now, from here, we were required to find the MGF of this random variable x, which is assuming the value r. And then, after that, then we will, we will try to find the mean and the variance. So, to do this, uh, we will need first to look at the definition of the moment generating function of a discrete random variable. Of course, the moment, the moment generating function of a discrete random variable is given as mx of the parameter t to be equal to the expectation of um, e to the power tx. Now, remember, we are saying the random variable x is as assume the value r. So this is going to be like just basically the expectation of um, our e to the power tr, like that. Now, this will be equal to, this is the discrete random variable. So this is going to be equal to the summation. So it's going to be to be a summation of e to the power t r multiplied by the probability of x is equal to x. And we have been given the function that is of use. Our function of e to the power t r is given as the fun our function of probability of our probability is given as q to the power r minus 1 then multiplied by p. Mind you, our value for r is running from 1, that is from 1, up to infinity there. So this is the, the specific allotment that we have. Of course, if I was to write this differently, I would write it like this. My r is starting from 1 up to infinity, then I have my e t r, then this q, the same as q to the power r over p, over q, sorry. Because this Q is negative, so it has to come down, then we say P there. Now, what the result that I have here, I can write it further in a simple way. So this is going to give me... So what am I going to get from here? What are we going to get? Remember, this Q and this P, they don't, they are not associated with any value of R. So we can factor them out. So in short, after factoring them out, we're going to have P over Q and then the summation of everything with R. So we're going to have E to the power T R, then Q to the power R, then R running from 1 up to some infinity value there. Now remember, R is common here, so we can factor it out. So this is going to give us P over Q, then the summation of E T Q okay then R factored out like that then again this expression if you want we can write it like this but remember this is the normal situation but if we try to bring this series or this power series a little bit backward from 1 to it's gonna give us 
I'll light what is ahead. If I want to light it, I can light it like E T Q to the power R minus 1. So which means I've taken this series one step backward. Meaning that if I have taken it one step backward, if I am to come back to my normal position, then what I need is basically part of it to be introduced here. So I'm going to have P over Q. Then the one step that I took backward will be just be E to the power TQ. Okay? So meaning this one, if you multiply with this whole thing, it will still take us back to that. Now, this is where we are going. Now at this point, I want you to understand that this and that can simplify. So we're going to remain with P, E, T. Then the summation of our E, T, Q the power r minus 1. Remember, r is running from 1 up to infinity. Now, this is the power series. And how do we know this? If we check the behavior, sorry. If we check the behavior of this function, if we get this which is factored out, e to the power t, then what's going to happen is this. Uh, if the value of r is 1 here, so it's going to be 1 minus 1. So the whole lot of this to the power 0, so it's give me it's gonna give me one plus. If this value of R is shifting, now it's two. So which means I'm going to have the whole root of this to the power two minus one, which is just this to the power one. So I'm gonna write e to the power t q plus. If we continue, it's gonna give us e to the power t q squared plus. And this power series will continue up to infinity. Now we all know what this power series amounts to. So if you check again, this one is going to be equal to P e to the power T multiplied by the power series of this one is given by 1 over 1 minus Q to the power Q e to the power T. So this is the expression that we have. And then, luckily, at this point, we can simplify this whole operation. So it's going to give us as P e to the power T then the all lot over 1 minus Q to the power E T. That is our moment generating function of the parameter T. So that is basically what we are looking for. So this is our result, very important result. Now from here we are now required again to find the mean and the variance.